channels and other elements to messages. Outlook 2013 gives you access to features and tools to create HTML newsletters and other publications right in the body of an email message. To start to use these features, click within the body of an email you're creating. Click the Insert tab. Calendars are a helpful aspect of Outlook and we're going to learn all about them shortly. For now, let's show you how to insert a calendar into the body of an email. Start by clicking within the body to see the cursor. Go to the Insert tab and click on the Calendar button. Choose the calendar you want to use and then click on the OK button. If it doesn't have any appointments, you'll see this message. Click Yes or No. A table looks like a miniature spreadsheet. You can insert these into your emails using the Table button on the Insert tab. Let's learn how to insert one into an email. To do this, position the cursor at a point in the email where you want to put the table. Don't worry if it's not exactly right. You can always move it or manipulate it later. Click on the Table button in the Tables group. You'll see a bunch of boxes here. The easiest way to insert a table is to drag your mouse over the rows and columns until you have the amount that you want. In this example, I'm going to drag my mouse to make a table that has 7 columns and 3 rows, or 7 times 3. As we drag, the table will appear in the email. If I click on the box, the table will be inserted. We now have a basic table, so let's identify the parts. Each box that you see in your table is called a cell. There are 21 cells in the table here. The rows go from top to bottom. There are three rows. Rows go horizontally across the screen. Columns go from left to right. There are seven columns. Columns are vertical. So now that we've identified the parts of the table, let's take a look at the other ways in which we can add them. Once again, we're going to move the cursor to the point in the email where we want our table to appear. Now go back to the Insert tab and click on the Table button and select Insert Table instead of dragging your mouse over the boxes, which really represent the cells, as we've just learnt. A dialog launches in the centre of your screen. From here you can select the number of rows and columns. In this example, there are going to be 5 columns and 2 rows. Select your preferences in the Auto Fit Behaviour section. You can select a fixed column width, make the width of the cells and table to fit their content, or make the table size fit the window. Click OK. The table now appears here. If you know your table is not going to be uniform, which is regularly sized rows and columns, you can draw a table. To do this, click on the Table button again in the Insert tab, and select Draw Table. Your mouse pointer will transform into a pencil tool and you'll be able to draw your table. You can even draw cells within cells. Click and hold the left mouse button down. Drag the cell into the desired shape and size and then release. It's that simple. To stop drawing, press the escape button on your keyboard. Adding text to a table is as easy as clicking into a cell and then typing. You will then be able to change any attributes of that text as well. Just like an ordinary document, you can choose whether to center text within a cell or whether to align it right or left or toward the top or the bottom. Go to the alignment group under the table layout tab. Use the graphics here as guides. You can select how you want the text positioned within the cell. You can format the text position for just one cell or multiple cells by selecting the cells or for the entire table by selecting the table. Whenever you create or select a table, the table tools will open automatically over the design and layout tabs in the toolbar. It allows you to easily apply the table styles, borders and shading attributes and more. The design tab lets you customize the look and the appearance of the table. Let's look at the table style options group, but first look at our table here. Let's put some headings in. In the table style options group, we can see that header row, first column and banded rows are all checked. Let's learn what all these options mean so you can decide what you want checked and what you don't. A header row is the first row in a table that contains headings or labels for the columns, as shown here. When first column is checked, it means that the first column is also headers or labels. Same goes for the last column. You can also choose to have banded rows or columns. Banded rows formats even and odd rows differently, so they're easier to read. If you choose banded columns, it formats an even and odd columns differently. Total row means to create a row for mathematical totals. In the table styles group, you can pick a new table style or apply shading to your table by clicking on the shading button. 
In the borders group, you can use border styles to add borders to the rows and columns in order to customize the look of your table. Now let's click on the layout tab. The layout tab, when associated with the table tools, allows you to easily insert rows and columns and format text and objects within cells. You can also create new margins for your cells. We'll learn all about margins in just a few lessons. The border painter tool is new to Outlook 2013. It makes applying different widths and borders to your table easier than ever before. To find the tool, select your table and go to the design tab. To use the border painter, first apply formatting to some borders in your table, then click on the border painter button. Click on any border to apply the formatting. You can also click and drag the mouse to apply to a whole line. The border sampler works with the border painter tool. The border sampler is located at the bottom of the border styles gallery. Simply click on the border sampler. An eyedropper will appear. Click on a table border that you want to sample. Outlook then switches to the border painter. You can apply the same formatting somewhere else in the table. When you're creating something like an email newsletter, you don't just type in the body of an email like you do for most other things. Instead, you create text boxes to enter in text. You can insert text boxes into reports and articles to help make certain text stand out. Text boxes can easily be moved, resized and repositioned, along with the text inside them to make creating a layout easy. To create a text box, go to the Insert tab and then click on the Text Box button. Select Draw Text Box. The cursor then changed to a crosshair. You can click and drag to create a text box inside your email. Once you finish, the cursor will appear inside the text box. You can then go ahead and start typing. It's very common to insert a link to a web page within the email. Let's learn how to do it. To insert a hyperlink into an email, click the hyperlink button under the insert tab. As you can see here, we can create a link to a web page for a file, a place in the email, a new email, or an email address. Let's create a link to a web page. In the text to display section, enter the text that you want to represent the link. This text will be the link in your email. In the address section, enter the web address of the page you want to link to. Click OK when you're finished. You can see the hyperlink has appeared in your email, and if you hover over it, you can see the address that it points to.